In this video, we'll be going over some more subtly immersive mods. We'll be adding new gameplay mechanics, reimagining an entire settlement, and fixing immersion breaking bugs. We'll first start with a mod that adds a layer of realism to the game, with suspicious city guards. This mod addresses a common gripe in Skyrim, in that the guards will turn a blind eye to your blatantly obvious suspicious activities. When you're detected while sneaking or with weapons drawn, the vigilant guard who spotted you will begin to follow you to observe your actions. Now they won't arrest you immediately, but they will stay close to you to ensure you're not up to any mischief. Now inside buildings, if you're sneaking about with your weapons drawn, guards will issue warnings, but if you persist, they'll charge you with trespassing. And if you commit a crime under the guard's watchful eye, you'll obviously be arrested or receive a fine. To escape a guard following you, you have a few options. You can either just hide from them, leave the city entirely, or just enter your home, all of which will end the guard's observation. Alternatively, you can just act normal until the guard loses interest, although that might not work if you're already a wanted criminal. There are also a few important details to keep in mind. Typically, only one guard will observe you at a time, though another guard may provide backup if you're acting particularly suspicious. And sneaking as a whole is definitely harder when you're in a city now. However, not all the guards will be equally vigilant. In larger cities, some lazy guards may still ignore your suspicious behavior. So if you like playing sneaky characters, this mod may be the perfect immersion booster. Now let's shift our attention to another mod that brings a new game mechanic to Skyrim, the Lock Bash mod. This SKC plugin seamlessly introduces lock bashing mechanics into the game. With this mod, you gain the ability to destroy and break through locks using your mace, axe, or whatever weapon you choose. I think this is especially great for non-sneaky warrior type characters who simply want to brute force their way through locked doors and chests. The mod itself uses a power level system, which determines your ability to break locks. Your character's power level is based on your maximum health and stamina. The higher your power level, the better you are at breaking locks. And locks obviously come in different difficulty levels. So novice locks can be fairly easily broken by low level characters. Whereas master locks will require a high power level. Your choice of weapon also matters when it comes to breaking locks, as some weapons are better suited to the job than others. Your fists and daggers are extremely ineffective. Swords provide a small bonus to your power level, but not the best. War axes and maces are stronger and more effective. Great swords boost your power level even higher. And battle axes and war hammers are the strongest for breaking locks. And how you attack also influences your lock breaking ability. A bat attack increases your effectiveness by 10%, and a power attack increases your effectiveness by 20. Now there are consequences to lock bashing. Depending on who witnesses your actions, different outcomes will occur. If a townsperson sees you breaking into an own door or container, they will report your actions to the guards. Hey, hands off. However, if a less responsible NPC catches you red-handed, they won't report you unless the locked object belongs to them. Guards, regardless of the situation, will take lock bashing very seriously. If they see you, they'll add gold to your bounty no matter whose property you're tempering with. So if you've ever felt it slightly weird that your orc warrior has enough technique and patience to pick a lock, then I'd really recommend this mod. Now let's move on to something completely different with coins of interesting natures. This mod aims to make the in-game currency system more immersive and logical. For instance, have you ever wondered why you can find septums in the deepest corners of Dwemer ruins or in the hands of Draugr who have been undisturbed for centuries? It never quite made sense. Well, Coins of Interesting Natures is here to address that issue. The mod introduces various types of coins into Skyrim, each with its own rarity and placement logic that aligns with the Elder Scrolls lore. Nord Draka can be located in ancient Nord ruins, ancient Falmer Malari in the Forgotten Vale, Aeliad Mala can be unearthed in Aeliad ruins, Dwarven Natrak in Dwarven ruins, Jibba coins can be found in root caves, and Sankar coins can be found within the Thalmor Embassy, the Thalmor Headquarters in Solitude, and Northwatch Keep. Beyond the new coins, the mod also acts as a lightweight economy overhaul. The new coins you discover throughout the world are generally worth less than the regular gold coin. This makes it harder to gain wealth in Skyrim just through adventuring, as now exploring dungeons yields less gold. Now as you pick up the coins, they'll be automatically converted into septums. However, if you don't want them to automatically convert, you have the option to toggle the feature off in the mod configuration menu. But by default, these coins are worthless and cannot actually be sold to vendors. However, the Coin Merchant Exchange mod complements coin. It allows you to exchange your alternative coins at general goods merchants instead of just having them auto convert into gold. If you want to convert them, of you course. can simply approach a trader and ask them to exchange your coins. Now let's look at something a little bit different with default face NPCs fixed. This unique mod addresses a common issue in Skyrim where some of the NPCs share the same default face based on their race. This is especially noticeable for characters like Erica, the Thane of Solitude, and Braille, a priest of Mara in Riften. Both of them, despite having distinct roles, share the same face due to this limitation. 
the mod rectifies this issue by giving these NPCs new and unique faces that are made to match their personalities and roles in game. Notable characters like Valga Vinicia, the innkeeper in Falkreath, the orc who initiates contact about the Dawnguard, and Malborn, the wood elf who helps you infiltrate Elissa's party at the Thalmor Embassy, have all received much needed facial makeovers. Now let's look at a mod that's been in my load order for years with Scribes of Skyrim. In the vanilla game, there are only two fonts for all the books, notes and journals, which makes every note and book that more or less the same. This mod introduces over a hundred unique fonts that are applied to the book scattered throughout the game. The best feature of this mod is that it eradicates any confusion between the works of different authors, so now you can easily distinguish between the verses of a revered poet and the deranged scribblings of a Windhelm street butcher. And what's even better is that the font variety isn't random. Books written by the same author maintain a consistent font, ensuring a sense of continuity and immersion. Now let's take a look at Kolskega Mine from the Environ series, a mod that significantly improves the area near Pavo's house and Kolskega Mine in Skyrim. This mod brings dynamic changes to the settlement, particularly after you complete the quest to clear out the Forsworn threat in the area. When you first reach Left Hand Mine, Pavo Aetius, a worker at Kolskega, describes a brutal Forsworn attack. Forsworn came in the night, killed everyone. However, upon your arrival, there are no signs of violence, and there are a few Forsworn just casually lingering about. The mod addresses this discrepancy by introducing changes to reflect the violent raid. After installing the mod, you'll notice the aftermath of the attack, including a burning house, the lifeless bodies of the miners, and evidence of ransacking. But once you enter the mine and clear out all the Forsworn, the destruction in the area will gradually be cleaned up. Twelve days after you've completed Pavo's quest, the area begins its rebuilding stage. During this stage, two new miners will arrive at Kolskega Mine. The first miner will start repairing the damaged house, while the second will set up camp near the mine's entrance. Twenty days later, an additional guard will appear in the area and a guard tower will be erected near the bridge. The house will be fully repaired and mining will begin again. In summary, Kolskega Mine from the Environ series is an excellent addition for players seeking a more dynamic and less static game world. Now let's delve into the skill-based dynamic animations mod. This mod dynamically changes the animations for both the player and NPCs based on their skill level or race. It currently covers magic, archery and sneaking in both first and third person. Starting with the sneaking module, the mod adjusts the animations based on your skill level. For characters with a sneak skill from level 1 to 50, the vanilla animations remain unchanged. But as your sneak skill advances to the level 50 to 75 range, your character adopts a more discreet posture as if genuinely trying to move silently. Beyond a sneak skill of 75, advanced rogues and thieves get a more fitting animation for the masters of stealth. Khajiit characters, regardless of their skill level, will use these master level animations. Moving on to the magic module, animation changes are linked to your character's maximum magicka rather than your skill. Characters with under 250 magicka points maintain just the vanilla magic animations. However, once a character possesses over 250 magicka points, the mod enables custom magic animations, which are actually whatever animations you have installed. Personally, I'd recommend using go to your animations, as they get rid of the hunchback posture and give your character a more refined spellcasting appearance. Notably, High Elves, Bretons and Dark Elves will use the advanced animations regardless of their magicka level. The Archery module works more like the Sneak module, in that it's based off your skill level. With an Archery skill from levels 1 to 50, you'll just use the vanilla Archery animations. But as your Archery skill progresses beyond 50, the mod then enables custom Archery animations. I personally recommend using the Archery Gameplay Overhaul animations for this, as they're more suited to an experienced marksman. To get these custom animations, you don't have to do anything special. You simply install them like any other mod, and enable them alongside skill-based dynamic animations. But what I especially like about this mod is that it applies to NPCs. This means that when you encounter enemies, you can gauge their skill level simply by observing their animations and stances. Well that's all the mods we have for today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to endorse the mods you enjoy using.